Hello, my beautiful friends, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and I think that if you're joining me here today on the main channel, then there's a good chance that you like yourself a good old movie or 12, and I'm sure that we're all partial to movies that like to scratch the old grey matter and make that brain work a bit to get the most out of the events we're seeing. In fact, we might have seen so many of these types of film that we build up some expectations within our mind. We start over-analyzing, digging too deep, and expecting twists that may never actually arrive, and the films on this list are the worst type of thing to us, as these are films that were so by the numbers that people assumed something more was going on when there was simply nothing. Heartbreaking, right? Well, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movies so predictable everyone thought that they were tricking us. But before we begin, I just want to state that I'm not suggesting that all the movies here are bad, as getting what you expect is sometimes a very good thing, like a haircut or a pizza or this video. It's gonna have another mum joke in it, just the one. And that's gonna be oddly comforting to some people out there anyway. Right, let's carry on with number 10, Avatar. Long before James Cameron's astoundingly successful sci-fi epic hit cinemas, there were many calling out Avatar for effectively just resembling dances with wolves in space, with a plot focused on a white saviour outsider helping an indigenous race fend off an attacking American imperialist and, yes, white force. Oh, and he's gonna fall in love with one of the locals for good measure. Now, Cameron, to his credit, freely admitted the similarities to Kevin Costner's Oscar-winning Western, and he clearly leaned the marketing of the film into this idea hard. So much so that fans were sure that there was going to be more to the film than a simple retread and that there would be some sort of gotcha-style surprise. However, this wasn't the case. What you see is what you get. Not that many seemed to care as the film grossed a horrifyingly large amount of money across its run. Cameron knew exactly what he was doing with his ultra-broad narrative and characters, and millions the world over got to experience a story about blue cat people falling in love, which I'm sure everyone was grateful for. However, anything more than that, well, that was simply unobtainable. God, unobtainium, remember that? F me. Number 9. Avengers Infinity War Avengers Infinity War is a textbook example of filmmakers simply giving the audience what they want, and that is not a bad thing, as I've said before. It's just funny, though, because this is a series that has pushed fans to explore further than the films present, into comics and backstories to explain why it's important that this character is here and why that character said that. Pretty much everyone called the fact that Thanos would actually snap his fingers and doom half of life in this film, and that's exactly what this gave us. Sure, the flick did have a few sneaky surprises, namely the reappearance of Red Skull and the death of Gamora, but given how even Infinity War's marketing played up to the devastation of Thanos' snapping, it's surprising how it happened without any subversion whatsoever. This was the right time for the snap, and it clearly didn't matter that everyone was expecting it because the film had toyed with teasing before and now they had to deliver on this moment. It didn't matter that everyone knew it was coming, but it was funny to watch the directors try and hint that it might not. Come on. Number 8. Spectre And now for a different kind of predictable movie, one that proved utterly deflating and how easily fans figured it out. Between the totally not obvious casting of Christopher Waltz as Franz Oberhauser, who of course turned out to be Blofeld, and the film's teaser trailer making it blatantly clear that 007 had a secret brother, it was hilariously easy to see where things were going. Now, despite Waltz insisting pre-release that he wouldn't be playing Blofeld, of course he was. And despite all of the usual globe-trotting super spy shenanigans, the spine of Spectre's story turned out the wrong kind of predictable. Fans quite understandably assumed that Blofeld would have a more compelling motive against Bond than simple daddy issues, but they were clearly giving the script too much credit, because that's ultimately all it boiled down to. It was a real shame. Number 7. Jurassic World between Star Wars The Force Awakens, Creed, Terminator, Giant Ice Ice, and Jurassic World, 2015 was really the year of nostalgia fueled reboot sequels, and the fourth entry into the Jurassic Park franchise proved to be an especially transparent, by the numbers, blockbuster. Though Jurassic World certainly looked different enough to previous films and touted an entirely new cast of characters, the A to Z narrative through line was largely a retread of what we'd seen before. A business's shady operations give way to dinosaurs getting loose and then trying to slaughter, well, everyone until the good dinosaurs save the day. And then you've got the two child characters thrown into the mix, and to nobody's surprise, they end up getting into mild to medium amounts of peril. It's a formula that works, so why bother changing it, right? 
Well, maybe because people have been waiting for it so very, very long for this fourth film. It might have been better to try and break the mould a little bit, but you know what, fair play. It did feel a little underwhelming for many because it simply trod familiar ground. And the one aspect that was new, aka the subplot of human cloning that was expanded on in Fallen Kingdom, was something nobody bloody wanted. Sorry lads, you've gone too far the other way now. Number 6. Star Trek Into Darkness I think that the worst thing that Star Trek Into Darkness could be accused of is smelling its own farts and telling us that the air was clear, because it did that a lot. For a full year before the film dropped, all of the cast and J.J. Abrams tried to fool everyone with the worst kept twist in the Star Trek lore, namely that Benedict Cumberbatch was going to be playing John Harrison, and totally not at all Khan. Guys, if you think this chap is going to be Khan, you're wrong. Him as Khan, you're a fool. For a full year, they tried that, and no one believed them in the slightest. In fact, the reveal seemed so obvious that people began to doubt themselves and thought that Benedict might in fact actually be a different Star Trek villain. However, when the film dropped, so too did the curtain shrouding this mystery character, and it was, drumroll please, brrrr, oh, it was Khan. Mm. Oh well, you know, Abrams has since claimed that he regretted making such a big deal out of the reveal. Yeah, I wonder why. Number 5. Mission Impossible Fallout It should be relatively easy to keep the marketing for a Mission Impossible movie spoiler-free. I mean, after all, the primary attraction has always been Tom Cruise almost killing himself for our entertainment rather than the plot itself. So it's a bit of a shame that, with the most recent sixth film touting arguably the most nuanced and intriguing narrative in the franchise to date, that the trailers freely spoiled that Henry Cavill's August Walker was in fact the central antagonist. In fact, this was so obvious that some fans began to doubt their own spoiler sense and assumed that the film would end with Cavill joining the team Fast and Furious style, effectively serving as Jeremy Renner's replacement. But the plentiful clips of Walker and Cruises, Ethan Hunt chasing each other in helicopters and fighting atop a cliff were all exactly as we thought it would become the film's third act. If the trailers had just focused on anything other than its villain, then we would have walked into that film with a bit more uncertainty. But no, it was weirdly by the numbers from the off. Number 4. Creed Ryan Coogler's Creed is one hell of a boxing movie, with some even arguing that it was as good, if not better, than Rocky itself. I know, big statement, right? It's an impressive achievement when you consider that pretty much every review of Creed referred to it as a not-so-loose remake of Rocky, with Michael B. Jordan assuming the underdog boxer part, while Sylvester Stallone slid effortlessly into the weathered trainer role. And when you look at it like that, yeah, it's pretty much the exact same film, even down to the finale, where the protagonist goes down against the champ quicker than your mum does on me as she tries to hop on my club a wang. However, the film knew how to play to its audiences and succeeded critically with them. And also, that's my one per list. The trailers quite eagerly leaned into the similarities, and it seemed so beat for beat that people assumed that Creed would actually win his fight. In this example, it was the right thing to do because the film understood how basic and familiar tales could be executed well if they respected the original story. Number 3. Batman v Superman – Dawn of Justice now, from the second a Batman v Superman movie was announced, nobody with any knowledge of how Hollywood or superhero movies worked actually assumed that Zack Snyder would be making a film focused entirely on these two crapping each other to death with their fists. However, despite all the trailers and promotional material, no one believed that the film would see two of the greatest heroes go at it for very long. And we were right. So who would be the final actual villain? Oh, I don't know, said Warner Brothers. Oh, do, I don't know. As they tried to tease the fan base, it could, it could be Doomsday. And then the fans were like, is it Doomsday? And they were like, yes, it's him. Yep. No, well, thanks for ruining that surprise for us with the trailers. Brilliant. In the end, what we got from this film was just one surprise, and that was that the titular pair only fought for seven bloody minutes, and fans were left glaring at Warner Brothers, who had liberally sprinkled most of those best shots in the teasers leading up to the event. Number two, Terminator Salvation. The Terminator franchise is notorious for spoiling pretty much every major twist it's ever had in their trailers, and Terminator Salvation's marketing committed perhaps the most baffling spoilerific sin of them all by shamelessly revealing the mid-film twist that Marcus Wright is in fact a human-cyborg hybrid. If they had left that out, then the film would have had a bit of intrigue going into it, but as it was right there in front of us, audiences soon pieced together that Marcus would probably end up sacrificing himself to save John Connor, and shock horror, he did. And any hopes of the cyborg reveal being delivered early were dashed as the film tried to play it off like a huge twist. And number one, Ender's Game. 
You've actually got to admire a film that quite literally spells out its big twist ahead of its time of release. Both the trailers and posters for Ender's Game actually tell the viewer this is not a game, which is a line that might sound like nothing more than a cool yet hollow catchphrase until you watch the film and realize that it's the actual supposed climactic twist, which reveals that Ender's successful training exercise was actually a real genocide against an alien race. Now true, you would know this twist if you read the book it was based on, but it's a shame that the idea was spelled out so clearly to everyone with just a passing interest in the film, and it was even worse that one of the posters actually went further and showed Ender destroying a planet. Yeah, thanks for that. And there we go, those were 10 movies that were so predictable that people thought that they were tricking us. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. Are you annoyed at the fact that they tricked us? I mean, I guess you kind of had to be kind of impressed as well that they managed to do that because they were technically delivering exactly what they promised. But before you go, my friend, I hope you have a bloody good day, whatever you're getting up to. Just take it nice and easy, keep it chill, relax as much as you can. And if you're feeling stressed and if you're feeling like situations are getting a bit too much, remember, you can always take a step back, take a breather, and then try harder again. Because you don't have to succeed first time in everything that you try to set out to in life. Trust me, failure is actually a good thing. You learn from mistakes. People who go through getting everything they want first time, you've got a question, are they actually learning stuff? And if you want to talk about this or anything else, then you can do so at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And remember my friends, I have been Jules, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.